Hello, this RDM Byte will provide an overview of decolonisation in the context of data management. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain some of the historic background to colonialism within the context of data management, apply the concept of decolonisation with reference to examples in the field of neglected tropical diseases and ecology and conservation, begin creating a decolonised data management plan for your subfield of bioscience research. Decolonization requires reframing how society operates to remove systemic impacts of colonialism. In the context of science, research and data management, this means redesigning the processes and frameworks we use to ensure the impacts of imperialism are mitigated and ideally removed. Some of the relevant ways colonialism still impacts scientific research include parachute science, when researchers from wealthier countries take over projects in other regions rather than enabling full involvement of the researchers and other relevant groups living in those areas via a partnership model. Loss of ownership of data and lack of crediting indigenous groups in research is another aspect of this. The avoidance of harm is a key principle of decolonising research, which can be done using consultation processes with impacted groups and using local knowledge to inform decision making and generate impactful outcomes. Some other key considerations lie around naming conventions and language choices for things like naming of disease variants, the dissemination of research findings in English only, meaning often many researchers and other impacted groups cannot access the findings, and even in the naming of things like GitHub hierarchy structures in insensitive ways. A key set of principles are the CARE principles established by the Research Data Alliance International Indigenous Data Sovereignty Interest Group. The meeting was led by Indigenous groups and sought to improve data governance by Indigenous people. They established the four principles of collective benefit, authority to control, responsibility and ethics, which provide a framework for decolonizing data management practices. We will now look at case studies of two different subfields of biological research. The first is neglected tropical diseases. These encompass a collection of 20 diseases caused by various pathogenic organisms, which impact predominantly the poorest peoples globally. The field of tropical medicine itself arose as a result of colonialism, with most research on these diseases being performed in order to maximise productivity for colonial projects. The ongoing impacts of this are still felt today, most noticeable in the fact that the diseases are neglected as a research priority. Some key considerations to think about when designing data management plans in this field would include Considering the ethics of the research design and ensuring the care principles are adhered to. Avoiding parachute science and instead building partnerships with local groups and researchers. Careful research design to ensure impactful questions are answered and the ownership of data is shared with local people who contributed to the data generation. Building trust in science and ensuring full consent is provided for research. Language of dissemination and naming conventions of things like disease variants and pathogens. Incorporation of and respect for non-traditional and indigenous knowledge. Accessibility of data for patients and local researchers. The reuse of data generated previously, particularly considering the ethics of much research on these diseases in the past. Our second case study focuses on ecology and conservation. Much research in this field is conducted in poorer countries globally, yet is often done by people from wealthier English-speaking or European nations, with little credit going to those in the affected regions. Again, a key consideration is the avoidance of parachute science and instead involving local researchers and local people in the data cycle, particularly with regard to specimen storage locations. The use of local knowledge and consolation Con consultation to design impactful studies and relevant policy interventions is also key for the success of conservation efforts. Appropriate crediting is again vital, including land acknowledgements where appropriate, 
as is ensuring cultural and spiritual aspects of the natural environment are properly respected and accounted for in research design. Travel can also act as a barrier to many research staff with health concerns or those who are members of the LGBTQ community. So equitable data collection processes, which enable local involvement, can also improve the participation dynamics for researchers from outside those communities too. Language choices and naming conventions again play a key role in ecological research. The English language may be less appropriate than local languages for naming of species, and for dissemination of storage and storage of data, it may be best to use multiple languages. Accessibility barriers such as software, hardware and finances are also key considerations when thinking about researchers in certain regions which may lack these resources. Finally, again, the avoidance of harm via the care principles is of utmost importance in this field. One shining example study is the Tuatara Genome Project, which embodied the ideals of decolonisation when designing the study, all the way through to publication of the results and data generated. The paper is linked in the description and includes a template agreement for similar future projects. We will finish this video with a task. Can you apply the concept of decolonization to your own data management practices in your subfield? Try looking up the history of your subfield. Are there any surprising links to colonization or any issues around race dynamics, such as in clinical trials, for example? What about the statistics of researchers in the field? You might be surprised by what you find. Use this research to design a key questions list for considerations for decolonization when designing your data management plans going forward. That's the end of this video. Follow-up videos on these topics are available as RDM Bytes if you'd like to learn more.